Sunday sun, please take me down. Man's gotta live his own life. Gotta live it his way. I wanna hear that lonesome Everything will be all right. I don't want to leave you. This is absolutely fantastic. Story. I'll never forget the first time I heard Take Five, I was like hooked on jazz. And also Vince Garaldi, when I heard Peanuts, you know, Linus and Lucy. So I took a course in jazz in college and also a film noir class at film school. Uh, so I'm really excited when I heard you were doing jazz in the movies for the entire month. But how does, how does a theme like this, because it's evolved, because TCM has done spotlights and, and they featured some, but now we've got two days a week and 40 films. How did it evolve to that for the programming? Oh my gosh, Jeff, I, I actually wish I knew the answer to that because I'm really going to give Charlie Tabish, the vice president of programming, all the credit for this. Um, because it was, it was his doing, you know, and, uh, when I learned that it was happening, I lobbied strenuously to be the host because, uh, just like you, this is right in my wheelhouse. In fact, I'll blow your mind right now by telling you that I knew Vince Guaraldi. No way. <laughs> Did you yeah. really? I took yeah. a piano. I was obsessed with learning Linus and Lucy. You know, people call it the Charlie Brown theme, or it's called da, 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 Right, so I took da, da, piano for five years I took piano, and I was obsessed with learning that. So sometimes when I sit down, people go crazy when I play it. You know, yeah. so who knew, how did you know Vince? Uh, my brother-in-law produced those Peanuts shows. And, uh, and Mendelssohn's? Is it, was it Mendelssohn? Or? Yeah, Lee Mendelssohn. Good, yeah. good knowledge. Good wow. knowledge there, Jeff. Uh, yeah, he produced those shows, and... Quite honestly, his stroke of genius was hiring Vince to do the music. And, and, you know, it was in the San Francisco Bay Area. Vince was based up here. Uh, he had done uh, Cast Your Fate to the Wind. Do you know that? Uh, oh, absolutely. I have this yeah. the music, yeah. And, uh, and that was it. And I, I'll say, and Vince was a, Vince was a real hep cat, you know. <laughs> had the long hair and, the, you know, the goatee and the whole thing. And... Uh, he, yeah, it's a, it's a funny mix of him with, uh, with Charles Schultz, you know. But um, Vince had the shortest fingers I've ever seen on a human being, right? I mean, I, he, I have hobbit hands, and I can't do, I can barely reach an octave. So it's almost impossible to play the piano for me. Yeah, but, uh, but that didn't stop him. I mean, he, he was fantastic. So honestly, Jeff, uh, your introduction to jazz was kind of mine as well, because it was Vince Guaraldi, absolutely. So anyway, the, the, that was a detour from your actual point, which was how this whole thing came together. Uh, Charlie was the genius who thought of all this. Uh, and I have to say, I find that um, the timing is very interesting, because of course, you know, TCM plans everything way in advance. Uh, so who, A, who would have known that this would be like a wonderful bit of counter programming right now with all the turmoil we have. Uh, and that I would be doing these 40 films with, uh, you know, six co-hosts of color. Uh, and it, it's just great. I mean, I, I, I'm having the best time doing it. I haven't shot them all yet. I still have a few uh, to go. Um, so I don't know if they're, I don't know if I'm talking out of school because I know that TCM hasn't, I, I don't know if they've officially said who all the co-hosts are. Uh, do, do, do you have that info? No, not, not, I don't. No, I don't. Okay. But I do love okay. what you've done so far. It's just been, because that's what's great about TCM. Not only the incredible films and the subject matter, but also how you go behind the scenes and how you go that extra step to really inform viewers the history. And just, I mean, that's just, that's the icing on the cake. <laughs> I'm glad you did. I mean, for me, it's the cake. <laughs> and the movies are like the icing on the cake. But uh, I, I know what you mean. And it, and it really is great. And, it, and it's fun. Um, I mean, I, I like uh, being able to tailor things. 
I find it a nice challenge to um, figure out where people are at when they're watching this stuff. Like, do they not know anything about jazz at all? Uh, do they have preconceived notions that are maybe wrong about jazz? And so uh, it, it is a bit of a challenge, but a really fun one to figure out where to bring people in. And that's why um, it, it's just been great because the co-hosts have been terrific at that. Um, you, you know, I love working with Monty Alexander because Monty is a, a really dear friend of mine. And he's also just a huge movie fan. I mean, honestly, I hope we can get Monty to come back on TCM just to talk about movies and like leave jazz out of it. Cause Monty will talk your ear off about Errol Flynn. <laughs> a huge Errol Flynn fan. You know? Who isn't, you know, Operation yeah. Burma. Yeah. <laughs> objective, uh, objective Burma. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it, it, it's, it's sensational. And uh, th this week I do my first show with Christian Sands, who I had not met before. And uh, we just got along so famously and we just, wanted to talk we literally we were driving the producers nuts because we were just talking 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 and it's like you know they can only use like three three and a half minutes of this stuff and we're just going on for like 20 minutes before introducing one of these films so well maybe a podcast is in your future for some of these things so we can see you know because ben gets all the fun you know with uh <laughs> peter bogdanovich you should get some of the jazz artists and and go into depth in some of these films. I'd love to hear about oh, that. Uh, that. That's not a bad idea. I mean, uh, it's on the table. We'll put that one on the table, Jeff. Yeah. And we can't go into all the different themes that you have planned for the month. There's so many, but I just chose a few. Uh, and we have coming up Battle of the Big Bands and the Glenn Miller story, Jimmy Stewart and Anthony Mann. Uh, I just, I mean, I was, a, my grandparents are from the, you know, born in 1901. They lived into their 90s. And when I visited them, they always played Glenn Miller and they played big band music for me. And when I saw Jimmy Stewart play that, he was just, I think this is one of his best performances. Yeah, he's absolutely fantastic. It, and, uh, you know, I, I've been around the block a few times with Hollywood movies and it's the rare movie that can kind of catch me in that really, I don't, I don't even want to say sentimental way, but um, there's something about that film uh, and the relationship between Jimmy Stewart and June Allison in that movie. And, and I'm curious to see um, if there's anybody watching on TCM that will watch this movie that doesn't know the true story of Glenn Miller and like, and, and how, how that story ends. Right. And I always uh, hope it ends differently every time I see it, you know, yeah. not to give any spoilers. That, something? yeah, not to give any spoilers away, but you know, you always kind of wish it wouldn't end the way it's supposed to historically. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and it, it gets me every time. And I, I agree. I think uh, Jimmy Stewart is just fantastic in that movie. And and one of the things that Christian and I joke about in the intro is like, uh, you know, if you had the opportunity to make the Glenn Miller story with Glenn Miller, you'd still cast Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> yeah. I've seen interviews with Glenn Miller. He's very dull. <laughs> He's very quiet. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that that was... I was kind of inferring that, but, <laughs> but it's just like Jim, Jimmy Stewart is better at doing Glenn Miller than Glenn Miller. Right. So, uh, well put. Well put. <laughs> yeah. And when you think of actors cast in real life roles, I mean, and back in the day, Sal Mineo as Gene Krupa, I mean, that is just perfect casting. And you know, I've just thought, I'm also kind of upset we have no uh, ball of fire. We need to hear drum boogie. We need to hear, you know, we're, <laughs> we're going to see the real Gene Krupa. We need to see him on the big screen doing some with Sugar Push O'Shea, you know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, it's funny, you know, one of the, <laughs> one of the, and I agree with you about Sal Minio. He's absolutely extraordinary in that movie. Um, the thing about doing a series like this is, yeah, it's 40 films and we cover so much ground and, and then you see on social media, people are like, I can't believe you're not showing this. How can you Twitter. overlook that? You know? I was looking at Twitter before I joined you today, and I'm like, wow. There are people saying, I can't believe you didn't do this and do that. Even me, even looking at your schedule, I'm like, how am I going to watch all of these? You know, there's just like you, there's some I haven't seen before and some that I have. And, and I thought, I kept thinking, there's so many you left out, but you're talking about a century of films. Yeah. Well, I, I say clear the DVR, right? Because there's a lot of these things that, 
that people really do need to see. And, it, and I love a series like this of this length because it gives you so much breadth and you can see a subject from so many different angles and man, jazz, it, it, it has been dealt with in so many different ways from, you know, a lot of the movies, I was very sensitive to the fact that a lot of the movies have a kind of a negative vibe to them about jazz because they're going to be like a man called Adam where it's like the guy, you know, Sammy Davis plays a, a not the nicest guy in the world, you know, troubled musician. You get a lot of troubled musician stories in here and booze and the drugs and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, that's not really the way I want jazz to be depicted, but God love Charlie. He included, you know, real stuff in here. So, you know, to get to see like uh, there will be a night of just real Jazz, that's what it's called. We're, you know, we're showing jazz on a summer's day from the 58 Newport Festival documentary and the Thelonious Monk movie, Straight No Chaser, which is weird because Monk was strange. Right. Uh, but it's great. Piano style that, was just fantastic. His piano oh, style. Oh, it's, inc it's incredible to watch him perform. You can see my, my rides here. The police are coming for me right now if you can hear that. You really live your film noir, don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So anyway, it's, uh, I, I enjoy that, that the, the length of the festival uh, gives us an opportunity to see the subject from so many different angles. And what I love about TCM, and I've seen a lot of movies in my, my lifetime and my 25 years as a film critic, but the other night I discovered a film I had never seen before, and The Five Pennies. And seeing Satchmo and Danny Kaye do the Saints Go Marching In, I thought, sometimes I say to myself, you can't watch everything, but I mean, that was discovering, you know, the lost mine, you know, for me, I was like, I couldn't believe I'd not seen that. And I've watched it twice already. Yeah. It's, I said to somebody on, on uh, social media, I said, this is a weirdly irresistible movie because it's the kind of Hollywood movie that I normally, you know, come on, you, you're not going to get me, you know, you're not going to suck me into this schmaltzy thing, but it, it, so it is the red nickel story. I mean, that is pretty accurate to his, very much like the Glenn Miller story is very accurate to the reality. So, you know, the Gene Krupa story isn't nearly as dark as the true Gene Krupa story. Uh, but the, yeah, the five pennies was just great. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm going to confess, I'm not the world's biggest Danny Kaye fan, but He's terrific in this film. He's good in small doses, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, well, you, you know, I mean, maybe, I love, I it, love, you know, the yeah. Walter Mitty, and there's some things that I like. But when he does his music, when he does those incredibly long songs, and doing when the Saints go marching in, I thought, geez, really? That, and then all of a sudden, they just, they, I've never heard anything like that. I mean, they were just amazing. You know, it looks like oh. they were making it up as they went along, which they probably did because that's what jazz is all about. Well, and that's how that's how good those guys are, and and you know Louis Armstrong especially, he makes every every person within a mile of him better, just by virtue of his being there, you know. And he, back he, in the day, he, and go ahead. Well, and it's funny because Armstrong in this series comes out as like the the touchstone. I mean, he's like in everything. You know, he, he shows up in bit parts here and, and a man called Adam, he actually had a dramatic role where he plays a character. He shows up in high society. He'll be in, uh, later on we're showing uh, New Orleans with uh, Billy Holiday and Louis Armstrong. He's, he is the guy, you know, and it's- And, uh, he, and with he, all the political unrest going on right now with Black Lives Matter, you know, back in the day, he was one of the accepted African-Americans all across the board from Walt Disney. To, they all adored him. He was one of those that enjoyed that success. Uh, he was just such a superstar that everybody adored him. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the talent transcended everything. You know, I mean, obviously there was something about his performances that made white people comfortable because he was clearly like doing his act, you know, but everybody knew that, you know, after hours, <laughs> Louis Armstrong was a little different character than he was on stage to a, to a degree, you know, right. I mean, I love the, I love the tales about him making high society with Bing Crosby. Oh yeah. And, and my he, favorite quote of all time is like, so a reporter asked him, what is jazz? And he goes, man, if you have to ask, you'll never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
And, and, and there's some good stories about uh, Armstrong and Bing Crosby off the set of High Society. <laughs> and I saw High Society when I was a kid, but not the entire film, but only in That's Entertainment when it was released in the theaters. Right. So I was obsessed with like, when, I got to see that entire movie. And luckily, you know, of course, I eventually did. But to hear them sing That's Jazz, you know, that song where they, yeah. you know, up, you know and I just, I just that just really influenced me, really did. So I'm glad you're showing High Society. You showed High Society. Yeah. It's so funny when, uh, I, I love the fact that I get credit for all this stuff that Charlie actually does. <laughs> <laughs> People say, thanks for showing this. Thanks for showing. And it's like, that's the TCM team. Right. I'm, I'm just the front guy out there, you know. It's no like, attention to the man behind the programming curtain. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you can blame me for anything I show on Noir Alley, but for this thing, uh, what about Jazz Noir Night? Did you have any time? You have, uh, we have Crime in the Streets and I Want to Live with the great Susan Award. I mean, you had no influence on that? They did think of you when they programmed that night? I, I honestly don't know. It's a great night. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And, you know, the international night is really fantastic. I, I Personally, I think that might be the best five film one night lineup I've ever seen or at least since i've been at tcm that's the killer the the japanese film the warped ones uh and then it goes into um i've seen black that? orpheus i've seen black orpheus before but i don't recognize the other films that night oh it, it's the warped ones elevator to the gallows the louis mal film that has the miles davis score and then polanski's knife in the water which has a fantastic jazz score and then um Pale Flower, one of my favorite movies of all time, which has this very avant-garde jazz score, and then Black Orpheus. Yeah, so I'm, it really is an international thing. Two Japanese films, a French film, a Polish film, and a Brazilian film, and the music is sensational in all of them. Well, I'm looking forward to the Louis Malle film because I'm a huge fan of his, you know, Au revoir les enfants and, yeah. and uh, Murmur of the Heart. I mean, he's just one of my favorite French directors, and I can't wait to see that because some of these are not available. You have to watch them on TCM when they appear. You bet. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to know that you're uh, unfamiliar or at least haven't seen that movie because it is sensational. I showed it actually on, uh, on Noir Alley earlier this year. I, I co Alicia Malone co-hosted that one with me. I talked to Alicia. And a lot of times. people, that was a first for a lot of people seeing that and uh, it, it blew a lot of people away. So I know it's a corny question, but do you have a favorite jazz movie score? I think mine is anatomy of a murder. I mean, I, I, I even travel with that movie on all my digital devices when I travel just to hear the score and the opening of that. And also, I, I, it's hard to choose, but I love Bullet too with uh, Steve McQueen yeah. for that modern jazz. And seeing it at TCM Fest last year at the Chinese Theater was one of the greatest thrills to see that on the big screen. So, but I, I love anatomy of murder. I would have to choose that as my favorite jazz score in the film. Uh, yeah, I like that one very much. Um, I'm going to say it's a toss-up for me between Elevator to the Gallows and Odds Against Tomorrow. The John Lewis and Modern Jazz Quartet score for Odds Against Tomorrow is really, really great. And there's, it's very, very different than Miles' score uh, and, and from Duke and Billy Strayhorn's score for uh, Anatomy of a Murder. An another one that I like that isn't in this series, we're showing Farewell, My Lovely, and the score is by David Shire. But David Shire did a score uh, that I love for the taking of Pelham 123. Oh. It is like a 70s, really propulsive, jazzy da -dum, da -dum, score. Da -dum. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I really love that We just watched that the other day, and uh, my roommate's like, uh, he recognized Hector Elizondo from, he's doing those, in, those commercials right now that are airing. He goes, that's one of the guys on the train. I go, yeah, that, that's <laughs> yeah. him. <laughs> Yeah, I, lo I love that movie. Yeah. Oh, me too. It's one of my favorites. And, you know, you have, um, I, I was surprised, No Sweet Smell of Success. I think that's got one of the great jazz uh, openings too, with the music and that is just phenomenal. It, it does. I think that what happens is that's one of the films that people are saying, I can't believe you're not showing this, along with Paris Blues. Right. There's another film that people say, I can't believe you're not showing it. Um, I think 
there, there can be practical reasons for that. The film may actually not be in license at the point where this is airing because you know i've i've shown it ben's shown it it's it's ben's favorite movie uh so it has certainly gotten played on tcm which may be a factor or another factor may be that charlie opted to show man with the golden arm which is also an elmer bernstein score and because man with the golden arm is technically about jazz musicians right uh he may have felt it fit the bill a little bit better than Sweet Smell of Success, which is more a movie about journalism uh, than it is about the music, but it has that. And, you know, the scores are very similar. The, are. the Bernstein themes for both movies are sometimes I hear Sweet Smell of Success and I think it's Man with the Golden Arm and, and vice versa. You know, they're very, very similar. You know another good score, sure. a good jazz score from the 70s? Mm -hmm. is uh which i never realized it until friedkin did the remastering of it was the french connection don ellis's jazz score for the french connection is really great it is but, but it's not used much i mean a lot of the film doesn't have it yeah yeah correct i mean there's a it's a great soundtrack but the score is used kind of sparingly but i have to say it when friedkin did a remastering of it which they showed at the turner classic film festival it was incredible because I could hear everything in the soundtrack that was kind of a little muddy before. And uh, this was just sensational. And it really gave that score of uh, every, everything it was due. Good job. And, and finally today, I know it's corny, but what, what is the film noir film that set your passion? Was there one specific film that, that set you on your way? Before you answer that, I'll tell you mine. Uh, mine was Laura. And I'll see if I can get this to work here. This is my, my lobby card from Mexico, yeah. yeah. And I always tell people, you know, to try to get American movie posters and lobby cards, you're gonna pay a fortune. But they, I go, look to Australia, look to Mexico. And so this is like one, I got this for pennies. You know, you can get the foreign stuff. And sometimes yeah. it's more exciting than the American, uh, you know, posters <laughs> and stuff like that. A good example is the apartment. I mean, that is the ugliest poster ever. But if you see the foreign ones, they're just brilliant. So. I, Laura, when I first saw that, I just have been obsessed with it and I learned every line. I, I just, I love that film. And I always wondered for you, the film Noir King, <laughs> what was the one film that just, that was it that set you on? Like, this is really, I got to see all the different, uh, the nuances of um, film. I, I, I think the answer is Thieves Highway, a uh, Fox film from 49 with Richard Conti and Valentina Corteza because it's set in San Francisco. And watching that when I was a kid, I was probably, I don't know, I was 13 or 14 years old when I saw it. And seeing a San Francisco that no longer existed really piqued my interest. Like, where's that? Where's that? And I just like the whole feel of it. it. A lot of the movie takes place overnight. And I like any story that's one of those throughout the night, you know, in the dead of night, all this stuff is happening while the city sleeps and all that kind of stuff has always interested me. And, uh, you know, it just, it hit me the right film at the right time. So uh, I would say that, I can't, it's not my favorite film, but I would say that that is the film that sort of got me started. And uh, Jeff, don't start talking about movie posters and stuff because <laughs> that, that's my personal Pandora's box. You know, I, uh, I collect posters from only noir, but from all over the world. So I know, I know about Mexico and Australia, and Italy, and France, and Belgium, and Germany, and <laughs> Poland, and Argentina. And, and if your Japan. house is on fire, you can only run out with one poster. Which one are you going to grab? Uh, out of the past. The, out of the past. one sheet for out of the past. That's, yeah. Excellent. Next to my house and my truck, that's the thing I spent the most money on. My life. So yeah, that's what I'm grabbing. I would run out with the Las Vegas story. I got my original half sheet that has to come with me. So that would be for oh, that's, that's nice. That's nice. Well, <laughs> thank you so much. We're in our final month of quarantine here. And Las Vegas just uh, has its second phase of opening. And uh, so I'm, I've been in, in this place for, for three months watching nothing but TCM and everything else. And I can't wait to finish my quarantine with uh, Jazz in the Movie. So thank you so much for talking to me today. You got to come to visit us in Vegas. We'd love to have you. My wife actually has a showroom in Las Vegas, so I do get there. Okay. Well, when you get here, we'll have a drink and uh, we'll debate some more. 
Okay, terrific. Sounds good. Thanks a million for having me, Jeff. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care. Bye.